Hey, good morning, all. Joshua, severe weather. Happy Monday, y'all. This is the official winter forecast, and we're going to talk about how this winter is going to look quite a bit different than the winter that we just experienced last year. And a big reason for that is the shift in the oceanic water temperature profile, what we call the ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Uh, we were in a La Nina for a couple of years heading into last winter that got wiped out and now we are well into an El Nino and I do expect that is going to shift our storm track significantly this winter, uh, especially for the second part of the winter. Uh, so the area in blue I've got highlighted is going to see uh, more snow, more winter weather than what we saw last year and that could be a lot of the interior of the northeast. Uh, the Mid-South back into the Colorado Rockies. And I'm gonna talk about why that's going to happen. Here's a look at how things have evolved. This is from weatherbell.com. And you can see going back to 2020, we were pretty much in a La Nina. You see these cooler temperatures here over the central and Eastern tropical Pacific. Uh, those intensified over 2020, 2021. And you can see seasonal variability. In the winter time, the colder than average temperatures have been more significant than in the summertime in the Southern Hemisphere. So in the Southern Hemisphere, that's actually uh, more so their summer versus our winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. This was a look at where we were in 2022, a strong La Nina with very uh, deep, cooler colors here. And then heading into uh, last winter, we saw La Nina in place to start but then as we moved into 2023, the cold got wiped out and by the springtime, warmer than average temperatures. And you can see those brighter colors taking over by the beginning of this summer here and continuing to warm up. And now as we head into the fall, you can see um, our stronger El Nino colors here uh, indicating warmer than average water temperatures over the equatorial Pacific. And I'm gonna shift that to the right and show you South America because that is the area of uh, potentially greatest concern here for a stronger El Nino. So you can see in 2021, uh, cooler than average temperatures off of the west coast of Ecuador and Peru here in the uh, equatorial Pacific. This was 2022. And as we go on in time here into the fall, you can see uh, temperatures began to warm off of the coastline here early in the beginning of this year, 2023. And you can see much warmer than average water temperatures off of the Peruvian coastline here back in March. These warm water temperatures have continued to intensify as we got into the summertime and much of the Atlantic and Pacific were running hot, uh, which obviously is of concern. But um, the one thing I will say is if you've ever taken a hot shower after somebody else has taken a very hot shower, you'll notice that that hot water gets used up pretty quickly and you go into cooler water. That's how the earth works as well. And we're going to get to a point where these warmer temperatures and average are going to start to break down. And you can see even in the last couple of frames here um, that indeed these uh, above average temperatures near the Ecuador and Peru coastline are beginning to wane. So that anomaly is shrinking and we're going to see these warmer waters shift back more into the central Pacific Ocean versus the eastern equatorial Pacific. Here's a look at the Atlantic and you will notice one thing and that is that we've seen a significant range of above average ocean water temperatures over the last three to four years. And there are going to be some variabilities coming in that in the next couple of um, seasons here, heading into the winter, heading into the spring and heading into the upcoming summer. But what you will notice this year is that Ocean water temperatures kind of hit a peak here back in the spring and early summer, especially over the eastern and northern Atlantic. Now, over the last few frames, what you will notice is that the departure from average is beginning to drop off again here off of the east coast. What this means is that uh, water temperatures off of uh, northern portions of the eastern United States, uh, near Bermuda, near Atlantic Canada, are trending downward. And this is going to mean that we have a little bit less storm fuel in place for maybe a blockbuster East Coast storm. However, there may be enough of a uh, amount of storm fuel in place for a big storm to come up the East Coast. And a lot of that's going to be dictated by the block in the Greenland high. We call this the NAO. Once it goes negative, that North Atlantic oscillation, then we have a block in place that allows storms to come up the East Coast. That doesn't look as favorable when you've got cooler than average ocean water temperatures, but a lot can certainly change. So the window may be open for one or two big nor'easters here this winter. Last winter, that door was open, but 
At the same time, because the water temperatures were so warm, everything went a little bit farther west and ended up tracking right up the Appalachians with the Great Lakes and Eastern Canada getting hit hard. This winter, I think things could shift a little bit. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that here in the coming slides. Uh, what I did want to show you guys here from NCEP, this is a division of NOAA. Um, the last really strong El Nino that we saw was uh, over 2015 and 2016. Now, what we've seen here is that we've had a strong La Nina in place for a couple of years. We are heading into an El Nino. These should be colored in red, but the stronger the El Nino, the quicker we go back into a La Nina. There's actually a bigger variability. And as we head towards this summer and fall, there may be a chance we go back to a La Nina. And that could mean we could have a very active Atlantic hurricane season, but things are climbing very quickly. We started the year at seven tenths of a degree Celsius below average. We've swung that all the way up to 1.3 degrees Celsius above. So already a two degree anomaly climb in just seven months. As this trend continues, we are probably heading from moderate El Nino into a strong El Nino, maybe even a super El Nino. I could never really accurately forecast that for you guys, but what you can see here um, is the progression here. This is from uh, NOAA's Climate Center, and you can see the progression of the very warm anomalies and how things have shifted from east to west. They're going to continue to do that, and as we head into the summer months, I expect we will head back into a La Nina. What does that mean for our winter? Well, first of all, this index here is probably going to climb a little bit more over the winter, meaning the El Nino is going to be very pronounced here in North America. Uh, but as we head into the spring, I expect that this is going to drop off significantly, meaning some active severe weather. Here's a look at model projections. And these are just projections, but you can see the mean here heading into the winter is around two degrees Celsius. Now, a super El Nino would be about 2.5. Now, there are some models that do show that in November, December, and January, but every single model I see begins to lower that anomaly as we head towards the spring. And pretty much everybody by the summer is saying El Nino is either fading or we're even maybe heading into a La Nina. And that could mean a very active hurricane season. Now, I don't want to get too far out into the weeds because we still have to get through this winter first. But here's what I'm going to show you here. Uh, as we head into the winter, you will see that we are actually positioned to have an above average temperature forecast due to the fact that there's going to be blocking over um, the poles here, and we're going to see active jet stream energy moving over the southern United States. Last year, this battered California very hard, very active southern jet. I don't see any reason why that can't be the case again this year, but the difference is that the above average um, heights that we saw over the eastern U.S. and especially the southeast are going away, and as we head into January, we actually see below average heights. That's these cooler colors here, indicating that the storm track is going to shift south from where we saw here this past winter. Um, that does not mean we don't get severe weather in the southeast. I think that's a very high likelihood. But what it means is that storm tracks are going to be less likely cutting up through the Great Lakes into eastern Canada, more likely to cut up or out to sea here over the outer banks of North Carolina. You can see in February that um, anomaly actually intensifies, and this is a total flip from last winter where we saw an anomalously high area of a uh, strong area of high pressure. Now we see below average heights and a pretty good trough. So this definitely increases our chances of seeing more wintry weather in places that did not see it. I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case right on the coast, but maybe across the interior, across the southern and central Appalachians, across interior New England, back over parts of the Mid-South, down into maybe even parts of Texas. And it means less likely we see above average snow over the Northwest and Western Canada, with uh, the coin flip potentially being in the Southwest. That is a little bit too uncertain at this point. Notice the seasonal models do show that we go back to above average heights as we trend towards La Nina, and it could be a very hot summer upcoming. And we're going to talk more about that in future forecasts. Here's a look at the temperature anomaly forecast. And one thing that sticks out to you guys is that we start off pretty hot here in December. Last December, much below average, especially in the plains. Very cold air dove down right before Christmas all the way into the southeast. I think the opportunity for that to happen this winter is a lot smaller. Doesn't mean it can't happen. Overall, though, I think we are looking at an above average December. And typically speaking, the rest of the winter still looks pretty mild with anomalies maybe over parts of the Gulf South or the Southeast for some time. And I think a lot of that will be due to active storm tracks. Rather than seeing that high pressure area off of Florida bringing us above average 
temperatures below average rainfall and mild winter, we will see more storm tracks, meaning a better chance for heavier rain and less likely chance of above average. Overall, though, I think this winter ends up above average temperature wise across the US versus last winter. So it should be a pretty mild winter. And then as we head towards the spring and summer, you'll notice we remain above average across a good chunk of North America. Precipitation forecast, this is where things are gonna shift in a favorable position for winter weather, as well as drought ending rain over the Gulf states and over Florida. We're going to pick up more moisture here as storms track through the Southern US beginning in December, but intensifying more across Florida and the Southeast and even up the East Coast in January. Uh, this definitely doesn't guarantee you folks in the Northeast that you're gonna see multiple snowstorms, but I think that chance is certainly there. What it does mean is that we could see another wet winter places like Philadelphia, Baltimore, DC, New York City, and Boston, all the way up into Atlantic Canada. Um, the West Coast is the um, wild card. The stronger that the El Nino gets, um, I think personally, the more rain could fall in Southern California. But if it doesn't happen, we could see that shutting off quickly. And by spring, we see drier weather building into the West. I am concerned about the Northwest seeing intensifying drought conditions. I'm also uh, liking this trend here across portions of Texas and the Plains, as well as the Southeast, where we may not want to talk about a nasty, cold, wet winter, but I think that's what we're looking at here. And that rain is certainly going to be beneficial for those of you that are dealing with wildfires this month here in the Western Carolinas. Those of you that are extremely dry in places like Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and East Texas. Um, we also could likely see some active severe weather across this portion, especially in Florida, but also across the Carolinas, across the, the, the parts of the deep south as we head on into February and March. Tornado outbreaks certainly look to be a little bit above average across this area, but we'll have to see because last winter we started off extremely busy with severe weather and then by April and May things shut down very quickly. This year that may not happen. So we'll have to take a look at that a little bit more closely here as we head later into this winter. Here's a look at the climate forecast system and you'll see it's projecting things to be extremely wet across California and getting very wet as well over the Gulf of Mexico and Florida. As we head on into January and February, it actually intensifies the wetness over the West Coast. In my opinion, I think this is too wet. I could see it being very wet in Southern Cal and Arizona and Nevada. Uh, as well as along the Gulf Coast states, but I think this forecast ends up being too wet across NorCal and all the way up the West Coast in January, especially if El Nino continues to intensify. Uh, a moderate El Nino would mean a wetter Northwest or even a weaker El Nino, but a stronger El Nino means a wetter California. You can see their forecast in February here, uh, also showing very wet weather across the deep south uh, and drier than average conditions over the Ohio and Tennessee valleys. I think that's possible, certainly. Um, the other thing I want to show you guys is 2015 was really our last El Nino that built in. And you can see um, last fall, let me uh, back that up for you guys here, 2015. Uh, you can see a, a very warm November across the eastern U.S., very cool across the west. But as the winter built in, December was extremely mild. And that could be the case again this December. As we headed into 2016, January and February were running below average in the southeast, above average over New England near to above average over the rest of the northern U.S. and a little on the cool side here. But as we headed into the summer of 2016, it was super, super toasty here from the central and western U.S. in June over into the northeast in July and August. So unfortunately, that's the downside to a fading El Nino is that you get a hot summer across the central and eastern U.S. Here was a look at the year without a winter, if you want to call it that, 2015, 2016, our last stronger El Nino. And you can see how warm much of the country was. I do think this winter could be on the uh, kind of in that same neck of the neighborhood here where it's going to be hotter than average, um, meaning or I guess milder than average. It is winter time, so we never call it hot, but a milder than average winter for many. Now, I think the southeast could end up a little cooler than this. Uh, this does not mean, though, that there's not going to be any winter. In fact, this winter storm uh, that impacted parts of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast right in the dead center of winter was one of the more intense winter storms on record. And I do think there's a potential to see a similar type storm this winter. I can't say how much, when and where, but probably some point later in January, February, maybe even early March 2024, we could see some of these same areas in here set up for a significant winter storm. You all missed that last winter. You got nothing. This winter, I think you've got a better chance, but right now it's way too soon to say where and how much. 
Just something I'm going to be watching for you guys here. Here's a look at the shorter term, and you can see the European showing we're going to have a pretty good start to winter over portions of the Great Lakes, as well as New England and the interior of the Northwest. Actually, it could be a very snowy November and early December in portions of the West, especially the Northwest. As time wears on, we're going to see the snow line begin to drop. Uh, this does not necessarily favor parts of the Gulf states. It doesn't always favor Charlotte and Raleigh or even Virginia Beach. You guys may have a more active winter, but not necessarily a snowy winter. When you get farther inland, north and west of 85, your chances do go up kind of exponentially for a big winter in places like uh, Richmond and Petersburg or Roanoke or Asheville, North Carolina or Nashville, Tennessee or Cincinnati. This whole area, I think, is going to see a better shot at seeing more snow than last winter. I know a lot of you want to see that for sure. This was last winter, and you can see bare ground, white everywhere from Chincoteague, Virginia, down through Virginia Beach. Nobody got snow, just a tiny bit here in the Mid-South. I think these numbers are going to climb significantly this winter, with the exception of, and let me bring my cursor out for you all to see. This area in here, I don't think has a very good chance of seeing much, if any, snow. I think our area that's favored is going to be more in here for above average, and that's going to make a lot of you folks in this area happy, uh, if that is indeed the case. Again, this is a seasonal forecast. Lots can change. Um, those of you in the upper Midwest are probably going to see significant lake effect, then it shuts down. Minneapolis, North Dakota, South Dakota, um, northern Nebraska, northern Iowa, northern Illinois, more than likely are going to see another are going to see about quite a bit of snow, but not nearly as much as last winter. Chicago is a coin flip at this point. I think you see more than one foot, but the chance of seeing more than two or three feet is not that high. Places like Boston, New York City are potentially going to be up for a nor'easter, but we don't know exactly where that sets up because sometimes these bigger nor'easters set up just off the coast and all that heavy snow ships well inland away from the coast. And we have to talk about rain snow mixing issues. That could certainly be the case this winter. But uh, I think we're going to have a pretty good winter. It's definitely going to look different than this past winter, especially uh, across the Northwest and especially across the Mid-South. As always, I'm going to keep you guys uh, in the know here of winter storms that come through this winter from December through uh, March, really, in February, but even into March. And as always, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I thank all of those who are subscribers. I thank you for your attention. This is my calling, and as always, I give all the honor and glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to God who gives me the strength to do this every day. I hope you all have a great winter. I look forward to talking with you much more here this winter. Have a wonderful, blessed day. See you then.